Hello, my name is Mark Koswitz, and I'd like to welcome you to Shoreline Music Monthly. Uh, we have a good show this, this month, I think. We have a fantastic guest. And uh, on Cabinet of Curiosities, we're going to look at the history of the theremin. Uh, our guest this month, um, I guess I met going on about five years ago now at a little open mic in Higginham of all places. Um, Came in, started doing his thing, and uh, immediately I could tell that he could probably recite the phone book, and it would sound good. Um, and then a little more listening, and I realized that the man could craft a pretty damn fine song, too. I'd like to uh, welcome, if I didn't just embarrass him too much, uh, Mr. Carl Suter to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Mark. It's an honor to be here. Excellent. It's great to see you. Um, Honestly, since that, since that day, I, I've been somewhat of a fan. Um, I've known you now for about five years. Mm -hmm. um, I got the impression you might have been doing this thing just a little longer than that. Yeah, longer than I care to tell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've been, at, we've been at it since I've been able to hold a guitar. And um, just recently, in the last five years, I started writing songs. Has it been that recent? Yeah. Okay. I know <laughs> I was looking around on uh, your SoundCloud site, and the... Uh, uh, the song that I had mentioned I was fond of, I was actually shocked to hear uh, was the first song you'd ever written. That's true. It was fantastic. Uh, Isaiah's song. That's right? correct, yeah. Excellent. It's about a man I met in Mississippi, and uh, he had a profound effect on my life and gave me a philosophy to live by. Wow, that's, that's uh, song worthy. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps uh, I see you've got a uh, Brought some reinforcements with you. I did. Uh, the fabulous Chris Funk. Excellent. Hanging in the wings. Um, seems that name rings a bell. I, I, didn't we just, have a, didn't we just have a funk on the show? I figured we might as well carry on the funk tradition and Very nice. keep it going. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I'm going to vacate this chair so that Mr. Funk could join uh, Carl Suter and perhaps we could get a, a little song break here. That would be great. Excellent. Well, he played no guitar He'd had since he was a kid He was a self-taught country troubadour Who played like nobody did Had a fondness for the light He drank from a mason jar He'd light a hand-rolled cigarette and pick up his guitar and the whiskey and the smoke had made his voice go low and the sad songs that he played from a time long ago he played songs about a hard life and people left behind about time spent in a jail cell and a contract that he'd signed Had a backwoods country wisdom And piercing eyes of blue And I'd sit out on that front porch When I was supposed to be in school And he sang those sad old songs Some said he was a crazy fool It was the first time that he smiled at me As he went through the rules he told me, don't let the bottle steal your song away. Never get too drunk for the people when you play. Thank God for the gift of getting through today. Let somebody love you before it's too late. You know, that old man never loved a damn thing except for whiskey and the songs. And the only time that he felt alive was on a stage where he belonged. He told me about that contract he'd signed and threw away and the regret he'd had for the choices if he found another way. And I thought I saw a tear as he told me what not to do 
closet Then more one more time he looked at me As he went through the rules He told me, don't let the bottle Steal your song away Never get too drunk for the people when you play Thank God for the gift of getting through today Let somebody love you before it's too late On the day I laid that troubadour down for his final rest it was me and a Baptist preacher, a man he'd never met. Tried to speak about a man he never even knew. And as the rain came down, I heard his voice. As he went through the rules, he said, Don't let the bottle steal your song away. Never get too drunk. For the people when you play Thank God for the gift Of getting through today Let somebody love you Before it's too late And I never forgot those words I live them every day when I talk to God each morning This is what I pray I pray Don't let the bottle Steal my song away I never get too drunk For the people when I play Thank you for the gift Of getting through today Lord, take care of that old man Till I get there Someday I passed you on the street just the other day You wouldn't look at me, turn the other way What happened to what we had? You loved me yesterday I say we got nothing, and that's a price I'll have to pay Give me that icy still like the only See you at a party It's like you're not even there Ever since you left I've been lost and I see you everywhere Which is me So you can't see me crying Cool me down, help me out Deep inside I'm dying I know I've done some bad things Turn you away from me Need a little rain To wash you away from me Stay awake at night While you're sleeping Hang out at the bar It's just time I'm keeping If you don't come back soon I'm gonna lose my mind Cause a woman like you and so hard to find I bought you a dozen roses Poured my heart out in that car Walk past your house every day And stand out in your yard If I could do it all again I wouldn't be the same Wouldn't take your love for granted 
I wouldn't play that cheating game with your foot ring. See, you can't see me crying. Pull me down, help me out. Deep inside, I'm dying. I know I've done some bad things. Turn you away from me. Need a little rain to wash you out of me. May not think I'm serious. Heard it all before, but I knew that I messed up when you walked out the door. Wish it would have rained. See, you can't see me crying. Pull me down, help me out. Deep inside, I'm dying. I know I've done some bad things. Turn you away from me. Need a little rain to wash you out of me. Well, I am magically back with Carl Suter, and um, that was some damn fine uh, singing there, Mr. Suter. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to, uh, if for folks, those of you who either were at the show or perhaps caught the first episode of this show, um, I mentioned the show at the Katherine Hepburn Center, the Black Friday concert by the Shoreline Underground. Um, I got some numbers back. They did uh, raise some money for the soup kitchen. It was uh, the best they've ever done. There were only 11 seats in the whole place open. So there's 11 of you next year. Um, they raised $6,337. Uh, there was a corporate match in place, brought it up to $12,674. And the soup kitchen has assured me that that will provide over 30,000 meals. Um, and on that same weekend, I believe I caught you perhaps uh, involved in a bit of a fundraiser um, over at June's. That's right. Uh, that was a good thing. Musicians always doing something to help somebody else. Some friends, uh, some folks lost a little. On Bellstone Avenue in Westbrook. Yeah, mm -hmm. lost a fire. Yes. And, uh, so um, now, um, this is a terrible segue, but what I want to do now is uh, Introduce Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, this month, we're going to look at some uh, little history of the theremin, which is one of my all-time favorite instruments. I hope you enjoy that. and I would like to welcome you to Cabinet of Curiosities, where we're going to continue to take a look at some of the less than mainstream musical instruments over the years. This month, a personal favorite, the theremin, uh, one of the first, if not the first, electronic instruments created. Uh, it certainly has the designation of being the only instrument in the world that you play uh, without actually touching it. Now, Theremin gets its name from its inventor, Leon Theremin. And though we're here to talk primarily about the musical instrument, I would be remiss in at least not touching on Mr. Theremin's stories. It's quite a fascinating one. Leon Theremin, and this is the uh, westernized version of his name. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his given Russian name. Um, invented the theremin while working for the Russian government on uh, proximity detectors. He was 
working on developing a land-based sonar-like system that would identify when an object moved into a defined field. Uh, he also worked on measuring devices and such, and in the lab at one point, he had attached an audio circuit to a measuring device and noticed that when his body moved within the defined field, that the audio pitch changed. Um, he was an amateur cellist, and as most musicians I know, uh, music isn't too far from your mind, so of course he immediately started trying to find individual notes and play the darn thing. Um, though he refined it actually as a musical instrument, uh, Lennon uh, was enamored with it and actually arranged a uh, European tour where uh, Leon Theremin performed to packed houses across Europe and his new magic um, musical device. Uh, it was uh, the toast of the town. He um, ended up moving to New York, 1927, uh, secured a patent in 28, uh, signed the rights to RCA. They produced the first commercial um, theremins in 29. Uh, wasn't a huge commercial success. I believe there were 485 total units sold, um, but people were fascinated by it. So his time in the U.S. was a was a whirlwind. Um, he reportedly was hanging out with Albert Einstein on occasion, uh, romancing Clara Rockmore, uh, who was one of the virtuoso thereminists of the generation. Uh, then abruptly, in 1938, he vanished back to Russia. Reports varied. Uh, there was talk of the KGB kidnapping him, bringing him back. Uh, another story had him just getting himself into debt and fleeing. Uh, some said he was concerned about the war. Uh, he got caught up in Stalin's purges. He ended up in a gulag. Uh, so many stories. and. I'm not going to try and pretend I know which one is accurate. Um, look him up. He's an interesting read. Uh, after the war, uh, the interest in the theremin kind of waned. Um, the, it became, again in the 50s, uh, somewhat popular with uh, do-it-yourself hobbyists. Um, transistors were now big, um, so transistorized versions were now being made. So one of those was Bob Moog who uh, started selling do-it-yourself theremin kits, actually, out of his home. Um, he was fascinated with them, and later said that what he learned uh, playing with the theremin circuits uh, led directly to the innovations that led to the Moog synthesizer, which, of course, dominated the 60s, 70s, and on. Um, this is one of his units here, as a matter of fact. But we should get to the actual instrument. Um, this, that this, what this segment is about. Uh, they're designed um, with two antennas. The antenna to my left, your right, is the volume control. When you are actually touching it, it is off. That's the, pretty much the only time you would touch the theremin is when you don't want to play it. The uh, vertical antenna controls the pitch and the way it works, and I'm not an electrics, electronics guy, so I'm not going to pretend I understand it all, but the musician's body actually becomes the ground plate of the capacitor circuit, because you are actually standing on the ground, and um, the distance between would change the capacitance, which changes the pitch. And any of you electronics guys, Feel free to correct me if I'm walking off the ledge on that one. So, the um, volume is controlled with one hand and the pitch with the other. Uh, vibrato is, is very big because it, it can be a thin, um, shrill kind of sound. Um, vibrato adds a little body to it, gives you a little more uh, depth to your sound. Um, 
amazing variety of bands have used this, of course. Uh, of course, it's ended up in the 50s. Uh, horror movies are all, I'm sure, seen the days the earth stood still. Um, but everybody from the Beach Boys, you know, the good vibrations, um, to Fishbone, to uh, John Spencer, so many artists have used them over the years, uh, Elvis Costello, uh, Black Eyed Peas. Um, so they're very versatile. Um, and in, in, in order to show you some of that, I've got a couple of different clips, um, one of which, the first I'll, that I'm um, going to play, is um, I was a guest on an album for some local folks, Womb of the Desert Sun. Uh, Look them up. It's uh, played on a couple of tracks on their most recent release. I'm going to play now for you a little piece uh, of their track, um, Invocation. <laughs> can be incredibly easy to begin playing. It is notoriously difficult to master. In the hands of someone who truly understands the instrument, it can be an incredibly beautiful thing. As a special treat, Mr. Thomas Grillo, one of the world's best thereminists, has given me permission to share with you just what this instrument can sound like in the right hand. Uh, I'll give you now Mr. Thomas Grew. That's all I have on the theremin. Thank you for joining me. Um, there's a lot more out there. We barely scratched the surface um, of the theremin itself. Leon Theremin, the inventor. Clara Rockmore, one of the most amazing players of all time. Of course, Thomas Grillo, kind enough. You've seen some of his work. Um, look him up. Uh, fascinating stuff. And uh, remember, if you can coax a sound medicine. <laughs> probably play. See you next month. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I am uh, a big fan of the theremin. I hope you are now too, um, or you'll never want to ever see one again. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I think what we're all here to do is perhaps listen to a little live music. So I'm going to impose upon Mr. Souter again. And uh, Mr. Funk, who's in the green room, we could perhaps get him back out here and uh, take us out on a little song. I hear he may be a little holiday classic. Uh, One never knows. All right, beautiful.
If the world should stop its turning and the stars fall from the sky, I know that you'll be with me until the end of time. If I ever get the chance man you wanted me to be I'll try not to let you down again my only friend calls you needed me like a wave kisses this old world sinking sand I'll come to you and take your hand walk into forever you and me if the world should stop its turning and the stars fall from the sky I know that you be with me until the end of time cause you needed me and I needed you cause you needed me And I needed you No better till I heard this old boy say, Yeehaw, for me another beer. There's lots of pretty women running around in here. Got no beer goggles on, I ain't looking for no tussle. Doing 12 ounce curls, building up my beer muscles. Well, right about then, this cutie caught my eye. She's a real good lover as she jiggled by. She forgot to mention she was with another guy. Prepare for nass nice whooping was the other guy's reply. He tapped me on the shoulder. When I turned around, he was snorting like a bull. Beer muscles he had found. He mumbled something stupid. Cocked his arm to swing. I popped him on the jaw and stopped the whole thing. He hauled. For me another beer, there's lots of pretty women running around in here. Got my beer goggles on, I ain't looking for no tussle. Doing 12 ounce curls, building up my beer muscles. Tussle, doing 
having 12 ounce girls building up my beer muscles. Thank you for joining us this week. And remember, if you would like to be a guest on the show, or if you have a charitable endeavor that you would like publicized, drop us a line at shorelinemusicmonthly at gmail.com. And remember, you are the local in the local music scene. Go out and catch a show. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow I'm dreaming of a white Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright